Aviation is one of the coolest industries out there with some of the most advanced technology on the planet. probably touches the lives of every single person professionally and personally. Yet, it is a highly complex sector with endless acronyms and industry specific concepts. In this video, we will explain one of those aviation concepts. By definition, available seat kilometers or available seat miles captures the total flight passenger capacity of an airline. It is obtained by multiplying the total number of seats available for scheduled passenger services and the total number of kilometers those seats were flown. Airlines have to try to match supply with demand for the passenger's benefit. While shortage of seats will often result in higher airfare, Excess capacity can lead to reduced margins due to higher fixed cost. So any increase in capacity is positive only if it's supported by adequate rise in demand for air travel. So let's look at how it's calculated. The available seat kilometers measures an airline's passenger carrying capacity, which means that it is a multiplication of the seats available multiplied by the distance flown. This number can be calculated per plane or per airline. It can also be calculated per route. And often an aggregation of multiple airlines gives us network level ASKs or ASMs. So basically a seat kilometer is available when a seat that is available for carrying a passenger is flown one kilometer. Seats that are not usable for various reasons are excluded. These could be seats designated specifically for crew members, etc. So why is it important? ASKs and ASMs give airline senior management a clear indication of their capacity. Larger legacy carriers usually operate several types of aircraft with different seating configurations. Hence, ASKs help quantify the total number of available seats and the amount each seat will fly. ASKs are further used to calculate load factor, revenue per ASK, cost per ASK, and overall profit. So let's look at a simple example. In this example, the airline operates one aircraft with a capacity of four seats, fairly simple. And they operate this aircraft between an origin and a destination which is 200 miles apart. This means that the ASM per leg flown is 4 which is the available seats multiplied by 200 which is the distance that these seats are flying. Hence the airline has 800 available seat miles per flight leg. Based on the frequency of this route per day and per year the daily and annual ASMs can be calculated accordingly. Now let's look at some practical real world examples. ASKs can be compared at the route level. Here you can see the comparison of ASKs between Vancouver and Toronto to determine market share per airline. Air Canada has majority of this market followed by WestJet. ASKs can also be analyzed at the airline level to better understand trends. Here we see the comparison of key operating indicators of an airline between Q1 and Q2 of 2012. You can clearly see that the ASMs have grown by 8.8% from quarter to quarter. This metric can also give a very transparent indication of the overall capacity growth of an airline over time. For example, Ethiopian Airlines has grown their ASKs at 15% per year since 2010. Similarly, ASKs can also be used to compare one airline against another. This can be done by region, by route, by type of airline, and at different time intervals. 
Here we see that American ranks first in the total ASKs versus other major carriers. ASKs can also be analyzed at the system level. In this case, we see the total ASMs for 2016 and 2017 for all US airlines at an aggregate level. To summarize, ASKs or ASMs are a very important capacity metric and make up a key performance indicator for an airline in their balance sheet. Here's a quiz for those of you who are interested. Outside of North America, which airline currently has the most ASKs being flown? You can leave your answers in the comment section below. Let me know which other aviation concepts you would like explained in one of my next videos.